Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Rolot and today I'm going to show you how to use the parallel or collusion mapping setup I've created for Blender. So we start with our normal Blender standard scene and what I'm going to do first is going to delete this cube and add a plane because this is better for the showcase, just better for the example. So I go ahead and open up the, come on, open up the shader editor. I'm going to add a new material. We got our basic node setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a image texture. Now we go ahead and, and, and choose which kind of texture we would like to work on. Let's for example, take this kind of pavement. It's looking interesting we can go into the shader mode, shading mode. And as you can see, there's our image and it looks quite flat. So what we're going to do now is, first of all, we are going to add a generated texture coordinate, a generated texture map. Yeah. And what we're going to do next is we are going to append from our file I show you again here. This is the parallel occlusion mapping version 1.1. Um, there we got the node tree. And from here, I'm going to append the POM node group. After this is done, we go ahead and add this POM group to our node setup. So as you can see, it's still flat. It's already doing some weird stuff like it's shifted a little bit downwards as we move the camera. Uh, so the next thing we got to do is we got to work on the height map. So take out the height map, which is coming with the POM node setup. And in here, you can change the height map. So in this case, um, we are having a flat texture. So you got to change that to flat as well. So flat, flat. So it won't cause any trouble. And we go down, there we have our pavement and here's the pavement height map. So as you can see already, um, there's already some 3D magic, magic stuff going on, some trickery going on. And um, we're not done yet. For the next thing we got to do is we got this normal mapping node, uh, node, not node, this, yeah, this output, this normal mapping output. And we put it into our normal input here at our shader. And now it looks a little bit better. <laughs> it looks like um, there's actually some displacement going on, even though it isn't. I can show you. If I go to the edit mode, you just see four vertices. There's no actual displacement going on. It's just happening in this texture. So next thing we're going to do, as we can see, this is all a little bit too high. So we can change the strength maybe down to 0 0.5. Maybe even go a little bit lower, maybe to 0 0.3. With the strength value, of course, you alter the strength of the displacement. Um, I would recommend to put it to a value which is working best. You can just experiment around a little bit. It's all up to you. And then we got the normal strength. Um, I guess it's a little bit self-explanatory. If you put it to 0 0.1, the normal strength is going a little bit lower. So it's not that bumpy anymore. Maybe that's a good value. We can also set it to five. Now it looks like it's a very rough surface. I, 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 I guess I myself wouldn't really enjoy working on this. So we put it to maybe 0 0.2. For now, I guess that works best, right? Then we got the border depth. The border depth is something which I implemented, which I thought um, most of the other node setups are doing wrong. Um, usually when you have a parallel occlusion mode node setup for Blender, at least those which I've seen, and you look from a lower angle, the illusion completely breaks. So you look from this angle and it doesn't look 3D anymore. It only looks 3D on a angle like this to there. And then if you go lower, it, it, it's breaking. So um, if you put this one high, like on three, as you can see, the illusion still stands, even though I'm quite low. 
um, you can turn this value higher. And as you can see, it's adding to the, it's kind of lowering everything down. So this is what I've done. And you can also experiment with this value depending on what you think fits best. And then we got a value which is called displacement center. And what this value does is kind of determines the distance between each plane, which is going to set down. So uh, if I put the iteration value on something like eight, you can see it quite well. Uh, this thing consists of many different layers and they are kind of getting displaced downwards. And kind of this determines the, the, the distance between, the, between each layer. And usually, I set this higher so we don't have those rifles anymore, this, 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 this weird lines. And for example, if you put this to zero two, you see there are some weird lines. So if I put this to three, um, still something similar appearing. Uh, so we better put it to something like 0 0.25, uh, which I guess works best for this texture. It's different from every texture because it depends kind of on the, on the, on the diversity of the height values. Um, like how, do how deep down a, the height map of, a, I mean, Let's say, let's call it like this, the value range of a height map is important for this. So if the value is going up from totally zero to one, you need to take a different value than if it's going from just 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. <clears throat> um, since I couldn't really figure out how to determine the <sighs> range, the height map, value range of a height map. Um, you need to set it by yourself. You just try it out and see which value looks best. And so in this case, maybe we just go with 2.22, uh, 0 0.22. So yeah, now we got this thing. It's looking interesting. Now we have a wet pavement, which is mm, looking like there would be a displacement map on it, even though there isn't. Um, the whole thing also works on cubes and spheres like for example if i add a sphere inside smooth it a little bit and add this texture to it materials you see first of all um we need to change change our mapping method from flat to box always remember you always remember to change it at the height in the height map as well. Otherwise it's not working. <laughs> Apparently. So we change it to box. It's calculating a little bit since the whole thing is going through all of the nodes inside here. Imagine with 32 iterations, it's taking even longer than with 16. Um, maybe I can still change the performance a little bit. Maybe the next days you might see an update on this. Maybe there might be a way to make it do it better. So it's not always going through the group, but maybe it quits before ready. That might help a little bit. So shader compilation. Now we have it cube mapped, box mapped. And as you can see, it's working quite well on a on a round surface as well maybe since this is this one's quite small either we scale it up so it looks a little bit better or you can just reduce the strength to like 0 0.15 or even lower it's all up to you um one thing I want to warn you about and uh, which you better don't do. F first of all, if I add a mapping vector inside here and change location or scale, it's all fine. However, if you 
scale it non-uniformly. So scale the y to 2 and the leave the x to 1. It's not looking that good anymore. Let me demonstrate you as soon as this shader has compiled. 50%. Uh, sometimes taking a bit of time. Surprisingly, it's going much faster if you render it. Like if you alter those values during the render period, it's going much faster. I don't know why. So, uh, for example, if I go ahead and set this one to two, it's kind of breaking at some points. I just make this one a little bit higher again. Maybe three, five, zero point three five. Uh, so you can see it better. Um, yeah, it's ca kind of breaking a little bit if you scale it non-uniformly. So if I set it to two, everything's fine again, basically. You might want to alter the strength a little bit, the smaller it gets, because that makes sense in my opinion. Uh, location, changing the location works perfectly fine. However, one other thing which I would not recommend to do is change the rotation. Like if I change the rotation to 90 degrees, you see this is happening. Which is looking totally weird. Uh, I still haven't found any solution for this yet. So I recommend you if you want to tilt the, or uh, not tilt, turn the texture, you better use it with a UV map. So if you use a UV map, you're totally safe. You just got to um, turn the texture in the UV editor then. You can also scale it there and it's totally safe. So if you want to change anything on the rotation and so on, align it better to your scene, better use a UV map for it. I'm still investigating into this issue, um, but yeah. Also, if you change it 90 degrees, it's it's all working. If you change it in size here, it's all working. It's all fine. Just don't do it here. <laughs> Just don't change the rotation here. It's 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 breaking everything. Um, so yeah, that's this was the showcase. Um, I hope it helped you a little bit to 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 not the showcase the tutorial let's call it a tutorial it's a, it's a tutorial it's a tutorial so yeah if you have any further questions just ask me in the comments below um and yeah hope you um find good use for my node setup and see you for the next video then greetings